If you want to model loads and dynamics of structures, you should try MSC Apex. Apex has powerful tools for turning a CAD model into a finite element simulation. As you work on your model, Apex automatically updates things. For example, if you tweak the geometry, Apex will automatically remesh. Apex is powered by the MSC Nastran solver. You can use Apex for most finite element modeling tasks. I know a professor who uses Apex to model cells that make up a blood vessel, but it is built for large and complex assemblies like you see in aerospace, automotive, and heavy industries. This video is part of a series on how engineering students can get started learning simulation with Hexagon. In this video, I will tell you about how Apex is used in industry, how to spend your first hour with Apex, and how to learn more. Let's go! Here are some of the employers who have engineers that use Apex. Many are in the aerospace and automotive industries, but not just that. For example, Apex is used in shipbuilding, construction equipment, and building the giant Magellan telescope. Here is a model of a boom crane in Apex. This is a large, complex structure with moving parts that need to be connected just so. Here you can see joints that are part of the structure. We can change visibility settings so that we see how different parts fit together. With Apex, you can model structures with many components. You can even see their dynamic behavior. Apex is built for converting your existing CAD models into finite element simulations. Let me show a couple of things that it does to make that possible. So here I have a bulkhead. Now I could mesh it just as it is, but there are ways for me to get even more economical answers. So here I have some holes. If I don't need to know the stress right near the hole, and if instead I want to know the overall dynamic performance of the part, or how loads are transferred through it, or what stresses are in a different part of the part, then I don't need to model this hole with any accuracy. So I can actually remove it, and that could let me put my modeling resources on other parts of the model that are more significant. Here, I'll zoom in on another hole, I just click on it and it goes away. Now, do I have to hunt down every hole? No. You see how there's a hole here and there's a hole here. To remove those other holes, I can put D feature into another mode. This lets Apex detect all kinds of geometric features and I can pick through them and figure out which ones to keep and which ones to get rid of just based on their size. So here I can pick 3D holes that are in this size range between about 2 and 41 millimeters. So smaller than this big hole here but that does let me pick these two little holes. Let's do another example with fillets. Say that I knew that I only wanted fillets that were six millimeters or smaller to be removed. I could just enter six in that scale bar and I need to drag the top end of my range down. And now I can click and I've removed only the small fillets. Those I might be able to judge as not being structurally significant. Doing these kinds of cleanup actions can cut the number of nodes that you need for a model in half or even more. Or let's say instead that we wanted to model this part as if it were made of thin walled elements. So I could use 2D elements to represent a 3D object. I'm going to do a very quick example. This is not going to be a really high quality job of mid-surfacing. This is just to show what a mid-surfaced model can look like. So here's the bulkhead and I can select the whole thing, and Apex will do its best to convert it into 2D surfaces. And we see that now. These are now surfaces. They're infinitely thin. I can extend these surfaces, and now they are one surface body ready to be meshed. Now, there are some real flaws with this model, but I'll let you figure out how to do better in a tutorial that I'll point out later. I'm going to take you from opening Apex for the first time to being ready to do your first tutorial. So when we open Apex, it has an application introduction card that explains what all the buttons do. We're just going to close that for now. Then Apex has a tutorial video browser. This is very helpful. With it, you can see not just what are some workflow tutorials that are in here, but you can also see videos on how to use specific tools within Apex, like how to use the D feature tool. You can browse to that there. I normally don't get videos through this window. Instead, what I do is I open a tool that I'm trying to learn how to use, like maybe D feature, and I hover my mouse over the button I push to open the tool. Then I can push this icon here to play the relevant help video, and that will search for the right thing. Alternatively, I can click on this documentation icon, 
and that takes me to written documentation. If you have trouble accessing the documentation videos, you might not have installed them. To install them for the student edition, go to the Student Download Center like you usually would to get the Apex installer. Then, just like where you went to pick Apex, you would click Download Files. And then you would pick one of these documentation installers. You would click the appropriate download link based on your language. If you are using Apex Student Edition 2024.1, you will want to enable the integrated solver. For 2025.1 and higher, these instructions might not be needed. I'm going to click Options, Application Settings, and I'm going to click Scenarios and Studies, Use Legacy Scenarios. This also will help us match with the first tutorial that you'll want to try. Now I'll go to Nastran Compute Environment and click Integrated Solver and click OK. Let me show you how to find your first tutorial. Go to Help, Getting Started. There are a number of helpful tutorials right in this section, and we're going to jump into the structure introduction. After I give you enough for you to get going with this one, we'll come back and talk about the other ones. To do this exercise, you will need this starting file, so you can just click on that, unzip it, and you'll be able to import that later in Apex. Then you can just watch the movie and it'll tell you what to do. I want to point out a couple of things that will help you as you work through that video. At the start of that tutorial, you will use push-pull to add and change fillets on the part. Make sure that push-pull is in fillet mode, then you can do it. Now, it's unusual to modify a geometry this way for design reasons. These tools are really there for defeaturing, to take a CAD model and turn it into a mesh. It's unusual for a finite element analyst to be able to just jump in and say, I want this fillet radius to be 10 instead of 6 millimeters. But I think that it's easier to understand what you're doing if you understand why you're doing. I have done some of the tutorial, and I want to step back with you and point out three elements of the Apex user interface that some people find a little tricky. But once you get this, it really helps you be productive. The first thing is the model browser, and this can seem cluttered, but really you need to know all of the parts that are in your model. I just clicked this expand button to show everything that's in it. Next is something called automatic tool execution mode. When you have this on, Apex will very aggressively act on your behalf, maybe in ways that you don't anticipate or intend. So let's apply a constraint to these two holes, and let's say that I want it to be treated as one constraint. Well, I'll click here, and click here. And I look inside of constraints, and I see two constraints. For me to have had these just be one constraint, I would have needed to disable automatic tool execution mode. Actually, I see another problem here, and this brings me to the third point, to use the pick filter. Look at what the targets of these constraints are. You can inspect it in the model browser. This constraint is not looking at that whole face, it's looking at one node. Why did that happen? Let's go back to the constraint tool. You can change what a tool targets using the pick filter. So here, this would let me constrain the entire part, which I probably don't want. I could also pick based on things like nodes or vertices, but in this case, to have something corresponding to what a bolt would do at this hole and this hole, I want faces set in the pick filter. Unless a tool has a very small set of items in the pick filter, I normally set something manual to be really sure that I'm selecting the right thing. The solid versus the mesh, for example. Now I'll select these holes, click the middle mouse button to apply, which I have to do if I'm not in automatic tool execution mode. And remember these two earlier constraints? I can just right click and delete them. Now I can place the model in the analysis scene. So I right click on the model, click place in analysis scene. Now that you understand how to navigate the model browser, disable and enable automatic tool execution and set the pick filter, you're going to be ready for the rest of this tutorial. After you finish setting up the model and running the simulation, you can see the results, like stress, deflection, and you can even see these things animated. In addition to the structure introduction video, there are other tutorial videos that take you through full workflows in Apex. On dynamics, nonlinear, topics like glued analysis, or composites. 
This introduction video is probably the best video to watch right after that first one because it will familiarize you with the Apex user interface. And there are videos on geometry editing operations for this bulkhead or mid-surfacing processes. Hexagon offers our own Apex training course on our learning center, so if you have access to that, that's a good way to go. Another option that's definitely worth considering is this FEA course from our partner Evotech. There's a version that is specially set up for academic users, students and professors. The course has a series of workshops, most of which involve gradually building up a model of a quadcopter drone. This is the most fun that I've had with Apex. If you're a student or a professor and you want to try using MSC Apex, you can do it. You can use it totally for free. There's a link in the description. And if you're a professional, you can request a free trial. There's a link for that too. If you're interested in teaching finite element analysis with Apex, I would really like to hear from you. I have developed some introductory curriculum and I can work with you on customizing that to fit your classroom or making original activities based on your approach. Feel free to send me questions. I would really like to hear from you. All right, have a great day. Bye.